Nick, you make a, you make the odd prediction. I don't believe you have psychic abilities, uh, but but you definitely are checking the pulse of Canadians, and you've got some very you know keen insights. Uh, so I just want to go through uh, a few of the ones that you made in 2021, and, and we can and we can see how you see how you've done. Okay. Uh, my producer <laughs> Trevor has written them out here, so I have to I have to read on my phone. Please forgive the awkwardness. Uh, so up first. Uh, this was in March, uh, after the Conservative Party members voted down a, mesh, a motion to recognize climate change as real, you predicted that we would see this thrown back at the Conservatives and even open them up to attack ads. Uh, I, think, I think that's safe to say you got that one right. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the, the, both the Liberals and the New Democrats really dined out on this one, pointing out that uh, there was a difference, rift in the party, and also uh, saying that, uh, you know, Erin O'Toole, is the leader of a party that uh, does not uh, embrace or at least recognize climate change. So it's been a, uh, it's, it, it's, it's basically dogged him mm. and, uh, and it's been part of the narrative that the, that perhaps the conservatives are not as united as, uh, as the conservatives would like to be. Uh, number two in April. Now, after the liberals unveiled their national childcare plans, uh, you said on the show that this will form a key plank of the liberal campaign platform and that they would use the issue to stoke fear to prevent other parties, particularly the Conservatives, uh, from forming government. And how did we do on that one? I think that's pretty obvious. Yeah, we did. We did pretty well on that. Although we must say that. Uh, it, so first of all, childcare was one of the big issues in the election campaign. Mm -hmm. The Liberals wanted to, to focus on that, as did the uh, the New Democrats. One thing that I would like to say is that the Conservatives came out strong on childcare too. Hmm. their alternative plan. I think the Conservatives saw that this was a potential vulnerability. They wanted to appeal to women voters, especially in the suburbs. So uh, yes, uh, the Liberals wanted to fearmonger, but they weren't able to fearmonger as much because the Conservatives came out strong, Aaron O'Toole, with an alternative plan to the hmm. Liberals on this one. And finally, Nick, uh, number three, this is in August. Uh, the election was just underway and you made a prediction about how vaccines would be, and I quote, a bazooka for the liberals to use against the conservatives. Um, and I think I can say that you are very spot on with that one. Yeah, although bazooka is not part of the regular lexicon for uh, social <laughs> scientists or data scientists. Actually, it was more than a bazooka. It became more than a bazooka because I thought they'd just blow a hole into the conservatives and then, then it would go away. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is basically, you know, the liberals launching with the launch codes. It's like, release the nuclear warheads, hmm. keep attacking the conservatives on vaccination. What I did not predict was that even after the election, the conservatives could not put this to rest. Like, let's face it, they've had a while since the last federal election to try to put vaccinations behind them so that they can focus on affordability, inflation, the rising cost of housing, anything else. And uh, this is still a vulnerability. So, and, and the Liberals are still taking advantage of uh, vaccinations in order to undermine the Conservative brand. Mm. 